Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're going to give you a short introduction to the bicarbonate buffer system. So with that, let's give it a go. So I'd like to start off with what are buffers. So buffers are weak acids or bases that can resist large changes in pH. And buffers typically have this generic formula, where you have a weak acid that is in equilibrium which it, with its conjugate base or vice versa. So these weak acids and bases don't fully dissociate like a strong acid would, so therefore they're in equilibrium. Now we can calculate the pH of a buffered solution using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation, in we, we, where we derived this equation in the previous video, Acid and Bases Review. So if you want to know how we got this equation, please go to that video in the same playlist. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about something called buffering power because this is incredibly important to understand in order to understand the bicarbonate buffer system. So what is buffering power? So the buffering power of a buffer basically describes how good a buffer is at being a buffer. And in mathematical equation, it's given this equation here. So the buffering power is basically calculating how much of a strong base is needed to be added to a buffer in order to change the pH by a certain amount of units. So in other words, if it takes a greater amount of base in order to increase the pH, this means that you have a greater buffering power. So we're, there's bu buffering power is going to differ for buffers depending upon whether it's a closed or open system. So we're going to take a look at a closed system first. So in a closed system, the buffering power is going to look something like this. So what we see here is that the buffering power sort of looks like a hill. And at the very top of this curve here is going to be the maximal buffering power. So a closed system, remember, is when you don't have any exchange of matter. So no matter is being exchanged with the system and the surroundings. So in a closed system, the maximal buffering power is going to be when the pH of the solution is equal to the pKa of the buffer. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the bicarbonate buffer system, which is an example of an open system in our bodies. So we're going to take a look and see what the buffering power will look like for this particular system. So let's just imagine you have a beaker, and inside the beaker you have a water. Now outside the beaker you have carbon dioxide, and this carbon dioxide is in equilibrium with the carbon dioxide dissolved inside the liquid. So how does this actually form a buffer? Well, it forms a buffer using this equation here. So what we see here is that the CO2 interacts with water, forming carbonic acid. And then the carb carbonic acid, which is a weak acid, dissociates into bicarbonate and hydronium ions. Now we can divide this equation into two separate equations here, the formation of the carbonic acid and the dissociation. Now since these two are common, we can cancel them out and form this general equation. So this equation is going to be used for the interaction that CO2 has with water. So now we're going to look and see how this works in the beaker. So we have carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that's in equilibrium with the water. It interacts with water, forming bicarbonate and hydronium ions. Now if we were to add base to this solution here, by Le Chatelier's principle, what we would see is that if we were to add base to this solution, the base would start to absorb the protons. So what would happen is that the CO2 would start to be eaten up by the reaction because it would cause the reaction to move forward or to the right. And if we eat up CO2 from the solution, this would bring more air or more CO2 from the air into the solution. Now, since carbon dioxide can leave and enter the system at will, this means that the system is open. So let's take a look at the buffering power of an open system. So the buffering power of an open system looks something like this. And what we see here is that the buffering power of a buffer, like carbon dioxide in an open system, increases as a function of pH. And our body is going to act as an open system. And the reason why is because in our blood vessels, which are really close to the alveoli, it's exposed to the atmosphere inside the alveoli, which allows CO2 to go from the atmosphere into the blood and vice versa. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this equation and see how we can use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation 
in order to calculate the pH of a bicarbonate buffer system. So the thing that we're going to do here is we're going to use Henry's law in order to calculate what the concentration of CO2 is in a solution. And Henry's law states that the concentration of CO2 or any gas in a solution is equal to the solubility of that gas in the solvent times the partial pressure of CO2 above it. So this right here we can substitute into the equation and then we can write our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation using that. So this equation can be used to calculate the pH of the bicarbonate buffer system. So that's it for this video and I hope this video helped you understand what the bicarbonate buffer system is and some general principles of it. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.